Namaskaram everyone and welcome back to my podcast after a very very long break. Uh, we have a special guest with us. Saurabh Anna, Namaskaram Anna. Namaskaram Anna, Namaskaram. Yes. Uh, so before we go into the podcast, a little bit, a two cents about Saurabh Anna. I came to know about Saurabh Anna from Pavitra Ka, one of my dear friends. So Prachi Ka contacted Pavitra Ka uh, to talk about Saurabh Anna. that he has come on a podcast with uh, Sandeep Maheshwari Sandeep Maheshwari is a big influencer i think i do not personally watch a lot of his videos but i know he has a lot of influence and he helps a lot of people and i personally went to the video and it's a 10 minute video if i'm not wrong is it right 12 minutes yeah yeah 12 minute video and uh, that video itself was very touching for me but what i came to know about uh, from pavitra ka is that you know that was a very edited video and uh, saurabhana like the whole message that saurabhana wanted to give was totally edited and chopped off in it So if any of you want to check out that video I'll link it in the description but here in this podcast hopefully we can get Saurabhana's full spiritual and uh, his personal journey out here what all he has gone through and of course the audio version for you guys will also be available on Apple podcast and Spotify so in case you're driving or cooking you can listen to it that way also so Saurabhana welcome to the podcast and uh, yes Anna, it's on you <laughs> please tell us uh, more about you and you know wherever you want to start from your childhood adolescent or i would definitely suggest like you can listen to that sandeep maheshwari video you guys if you want a very small version but if you would like the long yeah, version so that's what we are doing here probably <laughs> that can be a trailer like uh, you oh, can okay. see this as a movie okay okay cool okay. <laughs> yeah uh, so anna as a uh, like i am uh, my name is saurabh pande and uh, i am uh, i am i belong to kashi basically so it's already oh, wow. a very spiritual place but Uh, to be very honest i am st- i am i have grown up in delhi completely and uh, uh, worshiping rituals and all this has been a part of my family but uh, to be very honest uh, i was never into like going into temples or worshiping god or joining hands because it sounded very stupid to me from childhood only to be very honest so uh, like no comments i am being very honest about all that whatever yes, i yes, feel like honest. i have yes yes like yes, i have yes. whatever uh, even belonging to kashi there is there is so much worshiping of lord shiva there uh, in my family also but uh, what i always saw difference between me and all the other family members that uh, the kind of uh, purity that i feel in my heart the honesty and everything all that that i always sort of uh, i uh, like something that that always lacked in people even though they worshiped a lot in god and uh, but uh, i couldn't see that purity in their heart uh, or like uh, you are getting it na that uh, they were very conditioned yeah, uh, yeah. Very what conditioned. what 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 did you see what would they do and what would you see in their real yeah, life they would the like they would like uh, uh, like my my mother always told me that go to temple uh, join your hands and uh, ask for these seven things and there was a constant like these seven lines i used hey, to what, ask are what are the seven like, things what are the seven things hey bhagwan mujhe buddhi do mujhe samriddhi do mujhe ye do wo do it was just a list I, now it has been like i have forgot the seven lines to be very honest <laughs> so uh, basically in, in my uh, to be very honest i have been uh, in my school uh, like uh, uh, I have been a prodigy in whatever I did, like uh, in terms of studies, sports, music, whatever I did. Like uh, I, I don't know. Like everything just happened very gracefully and very easily for me in uh, education-wise, music, sports. Like everything, I was very good uh, in during my school days. So I would, you uh, know, like uh, like the. Uh, uh, I would like to jump directly after what happened to me in tenth class. Like how my life suddenly like took a toll. so yeah. uh, in in class 10th i got 9.8 cgpa and uh, i when i uh, in my school i was like uh, like i thought that i am a very brilliant student but then i joined uh, iit coaching classes okay my father wanted me to join iit coaching because uh, that time like in my family uh, there was a like norm that uh, guys generally go for science and uh, girls go for commerce okay and my sister elder sister 2 years older she was a commerce student okay so when i went to uh when i went to this iit coaching like i saw my level that i was just uh, to be very honest i was the lowest in the class like when i saw one of the brilliant minds in the whole of the whole nation and uh, when i saw like my score was almost like 80 90 out of 360 in the mock test generally okay so uh so i that's not a work... good score that's not a good score just no. to give the audience no, a context I, what's a good no, score no. It, it, you can imagine 80 90 in itj out of 360 is not a good score like okay. you may you may get a college in 
like in Mizoram or like some of the uh, like lowest NITs in India, like that okay. don't stand uh, well in terms of education. So, uh, uh, and I used to work very hard uh, during my eleventh class uh, when it was the eleventh classes, like. Uh, 10 to 12 hours of studies every day like it was a this has been in my personality that i have become very intense very easily like you can uh, like focus is my natural ability to be very honest like even if i'm doing something if and if you start playing drums around me i i will not listen to that that's like something a natural ability to me so what happened uh, after uh, just uh, during the 11th course uh, working hard working hard i started improving my ranking okay and uh, by the end of 12th uh, by the starting of 12th i got into the best batch of my iit classes okay so uh, that was not intelligence that was pure hard work to be very honest okay so the main how story much hours did you work how much hours how much? did you work to get 15 hours, hours did you study? 15 hours and i used to uh, leave my schools uh, i used to uh, uh, create fake medical certificates about me to get the uh, abs- absent uh, like a medical leave from school because to be very honest when one person studies for iit examination for them school just look like like uh, how easy that that is mm. like solving physics chemistry maths like school level is very basic for them so uh, that was my situation and uh, the main things actually happened by the end of uh, when i uh, shifted to the best batch of uh, my uh, coaching classes my body was completely yellow by that time I looked completely okay. like uh, I looked yellow in color. If you can imagine a guy looking yellow in color, so uh, and uh, then uh, one day I went to a mock test. Okay, and uh, in that mock test, I got fortieth, forty rank out of my whole coaching classes. Okay, and uh, I was struggling a lot. Like to be very honest, uh, studying fifteen hours and everything, this and that. Uh, I was struggling a lot to like. even holding my pen or sitting on the chair for long hours so what happened that uh, uh, after getting uh, 40 rank in my coaching classes like it just boosted my confidence okay so i decided uh, like uh, even though i was having very very strong headaches in my back i thought that i'm studying a lot that's why this is happening to me so i told my mother um, and and i used to vomit in the morning every day every day i used to vomit in the morning and uh, what was my diet that that time one coca cola bottle and lace packet chips like i used to i didn't used to like uh, whatever i used to eat i used to puke that out so what i decided that i will take chips just to satisfy my hunger and i will do my studying okay so when the situation like started uh, started becoming worse like the headache was very very intense like this part my back part of my head was just uh, like jhatke lagte the piche jor jor se so i informed my mother my mother took me to <clears throat> a psychologist suddenly so uh, this, uh, uh, not psychologist he was a neurosurgeon so he asked me uh, like uh, what do you study what is the point of studying 15 hours if you are looking like this just look at your body you are looking so pale so i like out of my ego that you don't know how iit students are like i said that uh, <clears throat> sir just uh, um, like this is our routine in iit coaching so he are just asked us go get these blood tests done okay, okay. so uh, they uh, just normal blood test they took my blood and uh, i went to my coaching one day on i think it was 16 july yes 16 july i went to 16 july 2016 i went to coaching and when i came back uh, everybody in my home was crying that day so okay so it was and uh, i had a habit that when i come from coaching i uh, that like uh, just repeat the notes once again two to three times then i go to sleep that was my routine basically and time made no sense to me like morning evening every time i used to study that was my routine so next day morning they took me to a hospital nearby and uh, actually uh, the nephrologist uh, just put two pipes in my neck here and uh, they put me on a dialysis bed okay so like that time also like i was so much engrossed in studies that i didn't care what is happening to me okay and uh, to be very honest the blood report showed that almost 90% of my kidneys have stopped working and my hemoglobin was around 5 5 and 
around 4 a person cannot survive when it comes to 4 and uh, 3.5 so even nephrologist had some serious doubts that how can your brother survive mentally like how is mentally stable if he's having so low levels of hemoglobin so my sister said that maybe this is some problem with your reports because my brother is a topper in his uh, coaching classes like his uh, one month back he scored uh, like his his score was 250 out of 360 in his coaching so uh, basically things happened like this way and uh, then my family shifted me to AIMS like just to get confirmation of this diagnosis because I was just 17 years old and uh, uh, for a 17 year old guy in fact for any age person like this is like a left life threatening condition so they take, took me to AIMS and uh, Aim, in AIMS that they revealed me in AIMS people are very practical like they just tell you what the situation is there is no emotional uh, like they don't care about what uh, like what is the emotional state of the person they just tell you what is happening so they told me that this is this is happening to you and you cannot survive on dialysis they directly told me okay so they, at that time they urgently looked we urgently looked for a transplant so within one month, uh, like uh, my family shifted me to one of the finest surgeons of India. He is actually Dr. Sandeep Guleria. He's a Padma Shri actually. And uh, like he's very frequent on news channels also. So my family took me to them and he said uh, he was very positive and he said, uh, don't worry. And uh, I will take care of your surgery. You just keep on studying for your IIT. Okay. Don't lose that confidence. And uh, here like situation is my kidneys are not working and here he's motivating me to uh, like uh, keep on studying for IITs so within one month like uh, all the tests with my mother were done and uh, gracefully like uh, my surgery was done within one month of diagnosis so uh, honestly like this was actually a very like how can I say that this I, I, I am very fortunate that in India a country like India where transplant is very rare like people are have very uh, like you can say uh, superstitions in their mind that uh, if we donate our organ this will happen to us but my mother was like very selfless in that act and she just donated me that kidney and uh, after uh, this uh, surgery four months four, like this is a very major surgery kidney transplant is a very major surgery and you have to stay on six months bed rest after that so uh, my family actually told me that uh, uh, you stop. You don't give your exam this uh, this year because you have not studied from the past six months, and uh, uh, there is no point of like getting a low score and uh, then repeating a year once again. So let's shift. Uh, like we will repeat the twelfth once again. Okay, but uh, I was like very stubborn about this. Like let me sit for the examination. Okay, so for uh, roughly around uh, I studied for one month uh, from February to March. Okay, and I took the permission from doctor like because after kidney transplant you are on heavy immunosuppressants. Okay, they put on you on heavy doses of steroids. Like you will, they will like completely mess up with you for the first six months. Like you will not remain a normal human being. You will have psychological issues. Every issue you will have blood pressure issues. Everything, and uh, but after five to six months, like I prepared for the examination and uh, in board exams. Like to be very honest. Uh, I studied one day, two day for every exam, and my final percentage was eighty eight percent in board exams. Okay. okay. Yeah, and to be very honest, like uh, mathematics, I had not studied from the past six months, and mathematics requires practice. But in mathematics, my score was ninety five marks. And when I sat in the examination, uh, uh, when I went into the examination, like when I saw the paper, I just kept on started writing, writing, writing because. I had prepared so hard for IIT you now, like I had mm. finished my syllabus by the end of 11. So right. that was my status. And so when I went to the IIT examination on, uh, I think this part was also chopped from Sandeep Maheshwari's video. So uh, just just one day before the IIT examination, so that there was a mock test in my coaching. And uh, I sat for that mock test and uh, uh, I scored 110 marks out of 360. And the result came only, that is a very low score, okay, very low score. So the result came on the morning of just four hours before my actual examination. So I saw the, uh, I opened my mobile and saw the result, it was 110. I knew that I'm not going to make it in IIT this, this time or any state engineering college. But uh, you can say that what happened that uh, 
I, I just want to give I I just yeah. want to give people a reference when I also attend IIT without studying I couldn't even answer one or two questions I couldn't even relate to order these questions so IIT. when Anna says I yeah, yeah I just simply gave the exam no preparation and all when Anna says 110 it means 110 I had attended the normal entrance also but I can understand the questions in IIT questions I'm not even able to understand the question so when he says I just want the audience to get a reference of how hard it is One ten means it's a huge thing. So yes, Anna, please continue. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. say it's, it's for some people it's a huge thing. But uh, the kind of uh, goal that I had in my mind that I will score two seventy, two eighty, or three hundred in exam just before the disease and all of this. And to be very honest, my mindset ne- mindset never changed. Okay, even though uh, uh, one incident I am telling you in ICU, I was having a eight inch cut on my stomach and one hole on the left side of my stomach. Okay, like. it was a very major surgery okay and on the fourth day in icu i remember uh, doctors came like doctor doctor bulleria came how are you doing i said that sir fine he gave me one paper uh, just integrate this function okay so uh, i in, i remember in icu i integrated tan inverse x by first principle so <laughs> people people who have a mathematical background uh, like they will understand that uh, like when even when you are heavy you are having heavy steroids going through heavy steroids and in icu <laughs> i was integrating functions and it was very fun for me to be very honest okay. like okay just doing that so uh, coming back uh, just uh, on the day of iit examination so how grace plays in role i will tell you like sadguru says that how like grace can make impossible things possible for you i had totally given up after scoring 110 that i cannot go in any college okay and even though after having compli- uh, like i had all the medical complications i knew that i cannot go far 20 kilometers from my home like the best college i can go is either delhi college of engineering or iit delhi these two colleges okay so just before examination i was just uh, pretending in front of my father that i am studying and that i have prepared for my examination because my father was also suffering emotionally that uh, my that such a bright son has is like this is his situation today okay so to uh, i remember i revised almost 6 to 7 pages uh, just half an hour before the examination and i went into the examination room and uh, i was deep breathing i was deep breathing i had just i had no no prior experience of yoga and anything i just uh, uh, saw some videos that how to maintain your anxiety this and that because that time i was having blood pressure around 180 170 this was my blood pressure if you know what is normal blood pressure it's 120 by 80 and my blood pressure was around 170 180 like over 200 you can get brain hemorrhage so that was the situation i ate around 6 to 7 apples because apples control your blood pressure I ate six to seven apples. I sat on the table, and the six pages that I had revised just before coming to examination room, almost four to five questions came from that. Just telling you the what is miraculous in this because in IIT we prepare roughly two lakhs to three lakhs questions per subject. Okay. okay. that's not an easy thing that out of 2 lakhs to 3 lakhs just imagine the probability of getting those four questions that you revised just half an hour before the exam okay right. and uh, my chemistry teacher had always told us that if you can have you seen bhag milka bhag yeah yeah bhag milka bhag yes there is a record that uh, milka singh was told that complete a lap in 46 seconds something like that if you remember and he burns that someday yeah. so um, i was always fond of my chemistry teacher like uh, during his years he was he got rank uh, he got uh, 250 rank in iit j so he was chemistry topper of india that time so when he used to teach us he used always used to tell us that if you can complete uh, like in iit there are 30 questions in maths 30 physics 30 chemistry if you complete that and uh, you get 3 hours okay so for maths generally you have you need more hours like more compared to chemistry so he told us that if you can complete 30 minute 30 questions of chemistry in first 30 minutes of examination then that will be a record breaking thing for you that uh, yeah. uh, and i in all my mock test i always used to take 50 minutes 55 minutes in completing examination okay that day i completed my chemistry paper in 27 minutes okay and and within 30 minutes of examination i knew that i have i will score at least minimum 105 marks in this examination i out of 30 questions 27 are going to be correct 100% that was confidence i was having after one hour of examination okay 
and then i attempted physics and after physics uh, during the third half then when i started doing maths uh, like i just completely dozed off like my health was again like i started panicking this and that because i was okay. not stable enough to sit in that examination right, but right. even after that 3 hours of examination my score was 203 marks out of 360 wow okay yeah and uh, my rank was uh, 8000 and uh, i was like among my percentile was above 99% like above 99 yeah percentile okay. was with i was within 1% of the uh, whole nation so okay. that was and uh, honestly i won't say that if some people say that you are very intelligent your hard work i just believe that's a plan of grace that how things work because so many things happening within just 6 months and yet i'm clearing iit and uh, only dc was my option out of thousands of engineering colleges only dc and iit delhi was my option to mm-hmm. go to study and i got the best stream in delhi college of engineering computer science wow. so yeah like any questions you want to ask in between no uh, it's it's going great anna uh, it's going okay i hope i'm not overflowing because no no overflow all, it's good no, please no, overflow no, no. <laughs> please overflow so anna in first year of college like uh, after all this i was just uh, a very naughty kid in class because uh, for me coming back to like living as life as a normal student it was like the ultimate thing like i am Like you have seen three idiots, uh, Rancho is just smiling in class. Okay, I was that kind of student because for me, like I had, there was a time I had lost the hopes that I will even live more. And me coming back to a normal a college, sitting like normal students, like I just used to smile in class. And many times, teachers have pushed me out of class. Like this, oh. this guy, yeah, yeah, this guy is very irritating in class. And so sometimes, like. Sandeep Maheshwari had taught that time a meditation that put ear plugs on ears and listen to the sound of the sounds that you hear when you uh, there is a video by him on sounds of sound of silence okay, okay. so in my class that teacher is you teacher is teaching and i used to put the plugs and used to meditate in class so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah i was like, i became like that and uh, because the excitement was too much of just being like like a normal person can you uh, like if i can put that in words so sometimes i used to escape from the class from the back back door and play football like i was in first year i was that kind of kid okay and uh, in first year i was the when the result came in engineering college you get a complete list like you have seen uh, it's not that you get your result on your mail personally you can see everybody's result yeah. so my rank was uh, i was from the bottom three students and uh, I was I Bot- think, bottom. Uh, you're bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottom three <laughs> in the okay. student because I, honestly, I I didn't like what 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 was being taught in the class. Okay, that was too old fashioned. Even in Delhi College of Engineering, where like we uh, they they used to teach 1980s syllabus even in today's day. So by second year, Anna, uh, like I started questioning everything. Like I used to watch Sandeep Maheshwari's videos that time. Okay, and there is something we talked about vipassana that time. If you are aware how of what, you, how did you come across Sandeep Maheshwari? I just want to know. Because I was Anna, I was bullied a lot when I went back to school. Okay, and uh, people used to make fun of me that you were the one who. Even my teachers. Uh, one incident I forgot to tell you that my school was very rigid that we will not allow this student to sit in the examinations because there is a possibility that he will fail in the examination and that will ruin the rep- reputation of our school. Okay, and uh, there was an incident in January. I I sat in the mock test. This, this was when you're going through your issues. They refused. To yeah, work. yeah, just post okay. transplant, post surgery. So uh, uh, when I went to the uh, uh, just uh, so when I uh, and I went to the school once again, uh, what happened? Ki uh, I sat in the mock test, the board board, the pre board examination. Okay. just uh, four months after surgery and uh, honestly i failed in my physics examination i scored around 17 marks and 18 was passing score out of 70 so the teacher called my father uh, that this guy is not mentally stable and that teacher generally did, didn't like me the physics teacher because uh, i was a student that who used to constantly question in class like any question that my mind comes and uh, i used to question the teacher okay so my father was very angry that time uh but he was helpless also that uh 
teacher is that if if he fights the teacher then uh, they may not allow me to sit in the examination so uh, during all this phase and uh, students making fun of me in the classroom and all this and everything used to like amplify because i was on very heavy drugs okay so i was not psychologically stable and uh, even though after that people used to fake people didn't like i can say that they were very cold in nature so uh then i uh, after watching sandeep maheshwari's videos during the first year okay and i had not encountered i didn't know about sadguru that time nothing so there was a video about uh, sandeep maheshwari about vipassana 10 uh, 10 my experience of 10 day vipassana session have you seen that video you are aware of vipassana i am aware of vipassana but i haven't seen this video yeah so i will again like in my life miracles happen like you can say i i will tell you vipassana story my vipassana story so when i saw this video vipassana i knew that like college is not going to make sense to me at any cost because i don't like the curriculum here okay and uh, the lifestyle of students is just like go in the class hang out with people uh, eat in the canteen or go to some mall like this it generally revolves around that and i was not allowed to eat in canteens like my diet was very limited and i was actually very different from all the children like i some initially i used to feel bad about that to be very honest that i cannot eat like pizzas with people i cannot drink cold drinks like the small things like you can say these are actually compulsions in my understanding now so uh, i read about vipassana i determined my mind that i will go to this meditation session okay and this is going to be my life now so when i talked this about about this to my parents about vipassana so both of them started crying that do you know what your what you have gone through like your medical condition are you aware of that you are on heavy steroids you have so much uh, precaution you make you are on immunosuppressants you can easily catch an infection if you catch an infection that there is a chances that your transplanted kidney will again fail okay like there is all sorts of precautions when you get a kidney transplant okay your life will never remain the same but so i my my mother father both started crying okay so i decided okay i will not go to vipassana then i requested my parents that let me enter into spirituality by choosing music i was very fond of piano from okay. where from my childhood so they said okay you do music and uh, i started looking for a music teacher around me and i came across a music teacher and i started doing classes with that teacher one day suddenly i uh, went to the teacher and uh, he was watching goenka ji's videos who is goenka ji he is actually the acharya of vipassana i oh, asked okay. sir sir you know about vipassana he said i have done two sessions okay so i was so surprised because vipassana is not as popular as isha yoga is okay vipassana is not like out of millions of people uh, you will see 10 people or 100 people are doing vipassana i was surprised that even here my parents are like pushing me in this direction and i went to this and i i have came across this teacher this teacher as a like who has done vipassana so he said that this is vipassana that you feel this in that you come out of the body and uh, uh, all this uh, st- stupid things like uh, but they amaze you like when you're not on the spiritual path and uh, so i decided uh, from music classes my classes turned to vipassana classes he used to talk all about vipassana every time then i pre i determined my mind i will go to vipassana no matter whatever my medical condition is okay i took Uh, around uh, i so after transplant i was asked to uh, we are we actually have to drink a lot of water so i used to drink 5 to 6 liters of water daily and clean water so i just joined hands in my front of uh, in front of my parents and uh, uh, i said that please allow me to go and uh, my father uh, like they were very emotional they honestly put down, uh, 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 they came on my legs and uh, my mother was actually joining uh, her feet uh, her hands and put down on my feet that please don't go there but i went there i took uh, around 3 to 4 carats of water okay and i attended the went to the vipassana session so i think that was the first uh, spiritual uh, practice that i learned vipassana and uh, roughly on the fifth day uh, suddenly what happened that uh, after we came from that tea break i started crying heavily very heavily and i had no no i no reason what was happening like i crying crying i was standing and then i fell off like 
uh, i was standing it was so intense like emotional moment that i was i didn't know why i'm crying and uh, after that that i decided that uh, i will leave this vipassana okay it was turning very heavy for me so in vipassana it is said that on generally on the sixth day okay sixth day people have a tendency to run away because it turns very heavy all the negative sankharas of all your lifetimes it generally comes out the most on the sixth day it is and on based on the experience of the gurus it is very common that only on the sixth day the people are more vulnerable to run away from vipassana and uh, so generally they ask you there, there is completely rm on in vipassana if you are aware of that you cannot look in people's eyes and you have okay. to remain silent for the 10 okay. days so there is a completely science that why you need to maintain this silence and the mistake that i did i broke that silence okay oh. what i did some people were talking some people like some 23 24 or year old guy they were talking they were they had decided that tomorrow we will leave vipassana okay this is non this is shit uh, i remember uh, one second and just give me a moment yeah 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 so and uh, some guy was talking you were saying 23 year old yeah so i remember i was uh, internally it was very heavy that that day for me and i was walking in the night after 9 pm everything everybody goes to sleep at vipassana after 9 pm so it was very heavy rains and thunderous atmosphere and it was 3 4 degrees in uh, delhi delhi center it was very cold and uh, some guy stopped me okay it, it seemed very spooky to be very honest and he said that uh, yaar ye sab kuch nahi hota and hum log shiv ji ke bhakt hain ganja wagaira ye sab liya karo theek hai this that will make more sense to you okay and hum log kal ja rahe hain vipassana chhod ke and if you want to come with us we have a car let's go together okay and let's have parathas at murthal murthal is a paratha te, paratha shop like there are there are popular paratha walas at murthal in, <laughs> so in between your silence they held you and they talked yeah 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 they okay. told me they told me. so okay. i just went back to my room no no i am not going to break this next morning sixth day four to five guys more came okay he let's take a bus from here we will take the yellow line and we will go to kfc let's have some burgers this is all shit by that time <laughs> kfc <laughs> yeah that was they were all 22 23 that was actually funny okay hmm. and what happened that uh, that is the logic of vipassana why you don't need hmm. to maintain silence because your hmm. mind is constantly finding reasons to run away hmm. and the moment like they said chingari lagi and you will just run away and hmm. the moment this only had a 2 to 3 minutes conversation it just forced me that no no i have to live away, live so in vipassana what they do they have uh, cameras in between trees they are constantly watching you that ha- are you maintaining silence or not so instantly the guruji called me okay uh, he said that uh, yeah, you broke silence i said yes so uh, he said he said okay uh, don't break it now so he didn't uh, like uh, scold me or do anything i said guruji i want to leave okay and that time i made all stupid uh, my mind like was creating all stupid reasons that i am a kidney patient this and that and even though i was a patient but the situation was not there like everything was going very smooth but my mind created all the stories no guruji i want to go away okay this and that and on sixth day i ran away okay i called my father my father was two hours away to please take me okay and guru ji just said one line that actually i after hearing that line i cried for two hours to be very honest he said tumhare jaise bachche zindagi mein kuch nahi kar pate bahut dekhe hain tumhare jaise jo jo chhote din vipassana chhod ke chale jate hain and these words like somewhere like hit me so strongly that probably for one month after that i was in completely depression okay mm-hmm. that uh, such a like he said that many after out of 1000 applications we accept 40 to 50 applications and that too you are wasting this opportunity okay and another thing you should never leave vipassana in between like it is an initiation process of 10 days if you leave in between like something very wrong can happen to you and that was something i was facing that i was in completely depression after that okay so and now after that i've decided that uh, i will once again do vipassana and then i went to the kashi center okay in varanasi there is a vipassana center that is very powerful that is energetically very powerful and uh, there i com- did 10 days completely okay and uh, to be very honest uh, i saw from 18 july to 28 july there is fantastic weather in varanasi okay so i thought that this ha- this is going to be a very good vacation for me okay 
so but on 18th july when we are just submitting our phones i checked the weather the 18th july weather had shifted to 28th july okay so the 10 days were completely you can imagine the worst humid days the days just before uh barish jo hone wali hoti hai usse just pehle ka jo time hota hai it was just like that. and in vipassana in varanasi they are so strict they are so damn strict that they don't even open the fan okay they say that if you want if you are observing the breath it will get distorted by the movement of fan okay that is their reason uh, logic so we used to enter the dhamma hall okay and within uh, there is a minimum one hour sitting is there okay so the schedule is from 4 am morning 4:30 am morning till 9 am 9 pm in the evening you hardly get 2 to 3 hours break in between so we used to go and within 5 seconds we used to be full of sweat that was the weather and no fans and for a person like me it was more difficult because i was on steroids and steroids make your body like there is too much right. heat in people who have contain steroids right. okay so after that i decided that uh like some guru ji told me like i uh, if people for people the pasna was not a difficult path i talked to them their experiences were very good okay but i was finding the pasna very difficult for me like to sit one hour still okay and do the practice so i talked to people like uh, why this is happening this and that so they suggested that your body is not stable you go for yoga okay mm. you go for yoga you first do some pranayam and fix your body and then i think you you will be fit for vipassana this and that okay so after that anna i went back to my music teacher okay and he had give uh, told me that i will teach you everything what i have learned in my life in 5 years okay but the intensity with which i learned music okay i uh, whatever he was about to teach me in 5 years i learned in almost 5 to 6 months okay so i don't know how that happened and after 5 to 6 months he had nothing to teach me uh, my music teacher so then i started seeking i knew that uh, in spirituality meditation is not working for me let me expand more in the direction of music and college was i i college i didn't care to be very honest my attendance was 40 45% and my students uh, my friends uh, i had some very dear friends they always used to mark my proxy and uh, just because of them i uh, like used to get 60% attendance and uh, i made uh, i was smart in one thing that i made the the college toppers in our school in our college uh, i did good friendship with them so just on the day of examination i used to request them just come two hours early and tell me what uh, are the important questions and uh, i will just i just want 60 70% i don't want 90 95% like you all and i used to manage to study one hour or two hour and i never <laughs> i always got around 7 cgpa this was my score i used to be last in class always but uh, that didn't matter to me to be very honest okay so i started looking for music teachers okay this and that then i came across this one guy hasit nanda who is piano sensation of india okay on youtube he is the leader of uh, like you can see that he is taking the lead of uh, piano like you can say arjit singh in bollywood and hasit nanda in piano so i saw uh, like how dots were connecting that uh, he uh, put a comment on his video that i am teaching some students in noida ncr region and uh, slots are open okay only five he only teaches six students and somebody who is so famous who is somebody with hasit nanda out of six students i so i decided i will learn from him okay and even though i was having no money that time his fees is like uh, his fees is not affordable for by everyone uh, because he is very classy so i started texting him in all possible ways but a famous person like him he is not going to respond to your text right and so many people are approaching you so i wrote him through hundreds of messages i wrote to his students existing students and finally i decided that i will use my mother's number because maybe he sees a lady's photograph he will like uh, emotionally he will respond easily that was my mindset like uh, um, the i changed my mother's dp on whatsapp i in that i was kissing it on her cheeks so i wrote from her that mobile number to hasit nanda and i got a reply immediately oh. hi sarab oh. I uh, hi sorry uh, I have just one slot left if you want you join immediately okay so I didn't think that how will how will I get the, this amount of money I just said yes sir okay 
and uh, so i uh, asked from my sister that please give me this some amount of money after that i will uh, i will like i will i i had no plans i i things will happen like in my life in past things have like just connected by gracefully okay so i went to that teacher and in just one moment just just the first interaction with him it was just magic okay uh, when i sat in front of him you just check out his youtube channel when, whenever you get time hasit nanda okay yes sir. so he told and in in just one class in just one class okay people get you, you you will see that people who learn music they get they write so many notes like so much theory is there he just gave me two classes of theory okay till that i have no notebook whatever i do i do through my ear okay and i started i just he said that saurabh you need a piano okay i don't teach on keyboard because if you not uh, want to learn professionally you need a piano and a piano will a minimum it will cost 45000 rupees okay and for a, i was just in third year that time okay and i was very because my father had just gifted me a 15000 rupees keyboard four months back i was hesitant that how will i ask for a piano once again okay so i said okay sir just give me two weeks i will arrange a piano okay and uh, that time i was running a blogging website and okay i was running a black uh, blogging website and all of a suddenly all of a suddenly <laughs> the website started working and, and i started earning around uh, thousands of dollars monthly from that website can you imagine like oh, wow. somebody yeah <laughs> so uh, it happened all of a suddenly like i had done a lot of uh, search if you know about uh, seo search engine optimization and uh, digital marketing i had done a lot of work on that website but i was not making money out of that a lot okay and uh, i came, and when i wanted a piano i was able to arrange 35000 rupees within two weeks and i asked from my father 10000 rupees so i started learning piano from the teacher and eight months like i my focus was completely on piano okay i even forgot that i am studying this and that and uh, career like uh, during third year people like people from delhi college of engineering we get so wonderful companies google microsoft and people get roughly the stipend average stipend is 1 lakh rupees in my college okay and i even didn't even apply for the internships okay my mindset was just that i i was just flowing that time to be very honest okay that's why uh, generally when people seek advice from me i don't advise them because i don't know how things work for from me uh, for me like things just happen happen to me like i just flow and they the dots just get just get connected all of a sudden so i learned from piano from him for 8 months and if you see my playing today uh in 8 months like uh, people didn't believe that a guy who has learned just 8 months of piano okay from hasit nanda can play so wonderfully okay this is people's words not about me my ambition is like in in front of my ambition i am still a like a noob in piano playing okay uh, so uh now uh, once again my mind was starting towards that i ha- have to enter the spiritual path and i was watching sadguru's videos that time oh how did he okay. come how did he come because i was always mathematics always very much intrigued me okay because uh, even sadguru ta- tells that even the deepest secrets of universe are very mathematically precise you know adi yogi statue is so mathematically precise and uh, spirituality and uh, if you see i will recommend you some documentaries the code on netflix you will see that how things are so mathematically logical and so correct okay like if you just hit the right mathematics you will just hit something right if i am making sense okay like sadguru talks a lot of uh, like uh, in that documentary uh, they talk you they talk about ratios golden ratios if you have heard about this word golden ratio like uh, if you have heard about fibonacci pattern the the sunflower sunflower always replicates the fibonacci pattern a snail a snail always have a golden ratio on its uh, shells like you will see that very wonderful uh, it it exists sadguru has very wonderfully explained the significance of number 108 108 like why do we repeat something in ratios of 108 nikola tesla was a person have you heard of nikola tesla scientist one of the of course of course yeah yeah nikola tesla was someone who was very uh obsessed with the numbers 3 6 and 
okay and you will always see that in hinduism the numbers that we see they are always in multiples of 3 6 or 9 to some that 108 it becomes 9 you see 432 that people say that om is the om has the frequency of 432 you some that 43729 and uh, once you start exploring this more you will see that three, this is like so much 9 3 6 and this is happening so much in the universe okay and indirectly sadguru has also talked about this okay there is blog of by sadguru like the distance between earth and sun is 108 times something something and you will see this very often so mathematics was something that intrigued me a lot okay and my music teacher he explained me music in terms of maths okay for me like this piano is just a like uh, something that i am i am doing something mathematics on this okay like uh, and being a computer scientist okay i am if if i start diving very deep into this this will become a very scientific podcast okay i don't want to like we can do that sometime later okay but uh, like i will tell you 2 ratio 1 2 ratio 1 is a very special number okay uh, in mathematics in art, i i belong to a field of artificial intelligence if you know and uh, when we uh, build artificial models like uh, uh, artificial robots or say we say that neural networks in computer terms we say that neural networks neural networks actually repay, replicate the thinking of human mind okay so their magically two ratio one works very wonderfully okay very wonderfully we don't know any hypothesis that why it works it just works okay uh, if you allow me i will play something on my piano please. And yes please sir it it will be just two ratio one okay nothing more than that on my left hand and right hand i will play some frequencies and I, the ratio yeah. the ratio will be just 2 ratio 1 okay if i am making sense okay please yeah can you hear hello you can hear yeah Wow, and it's beautiful. I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether I've seen, I heard this music in some Hollywood movies, and it invokes a deep sense of emotion within me. I don't know whether that makes sense or not. Uh, it and, may, uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> whatever is happening to you, or whatever it is, yeah, but yeah. the idea is just that this this piece is very mathematically perfect, very okay. mathematically simple and perfect, mathematically simple and perfect. It's not very complicated. Okay. Okay. So what I'm playing with on left hand, I'm just. Uh, maintaining some rhythm on the right hand with say like some ratio of frequency and that ratio is two ratio one. Okay, so even even in Indian temples like uh, Sadguru tells uh, no not Sadguru the documentary the code documentary that I'm telling you. So can can you tell where can we find this code documentary on Netflix? The code on Netflix on on also on YouTube it is available. Okay, so you will see what I played was just two ratio one and he has explained so wonderfully that this app this has existed in Indian temples. Okay, and many where. Uh, like so many places in nature this this is existing so this is something that very intrigued me and sadguru also told about uh, sadguru has a blog about classical music that how 
precise classical music is mathematically okay he has told, talked about shrutis this and that so anna uh, that th this was my mindset that time so whatever question i used to ask me ask my teacher okay uh, so he used to explain me this and that but uh, i knew that there is something deeper okay he may be not able to he knows that but he is not able to express that mathematically if you are getting that okay hasid sir is perfect in terms of uh, knowledge but in terms of expressing what i am what i am wanting uh, he was not able to give so uh, that time i came to know about mahashivratri in 2020 okay and uh, i decided i because uh, my parents were very protective about me that how will you go where will you will eat okay so i said no no i will i have to go at any cost uh, i will go to mahashivratri uh, this so my father agreed okay 2020 i will go to mahashivratri and my father's friend stays in coimbatore so my father said that he will take you up and down and you attend your function uh, that day okay behind before that i had no like uh, any devotion or anything about sadguru or anything about that so anna uh, i went to mahashivratri and to be very honest the ho the hospitality coimbatore people tamil nadu people provide you when they come to know that you have come for sadguru it's very amazing <laughs> it's very amazing honestly and uh, when uh, i had kept a fast on mahashivratri day but the person who was my uncle who was dropping me to isha foundation uh, he knew that he, ha he has to take medicines he cannot uh, stay on uh, fast so he brought all kinds of fruits for me he even he even took a watermelon no no you take this watermelon i said how will i eat watermelon but i'm <laughs> telling you just the kind of love that they gave me so on on mahashivratri i went there and uh, uh, the experience was very very magical and uh, i remember like uh, uh, the performance uh, ananya bhat's performance on sojuga and uh, uh, at 2 am roughly i remember i was Uh, standing on the chairs and sadguru was dancing uh, in just front of my eyes and uh, first time like tears were falling from my eyes for no reason and uh, it was like very emotional moment for me and like it was beyond some any logical explanation like uh, seeing sadguru for the first time very closely so and after that uh, this covid thing happened uh, i came from mahashivratri and uh, i got a snake ring and a rudraksh in gift Uh, in the prasadam and uh, i don't know like i was very high after coming from mahashivratri for almost two months not just one day two day for two months i was just in a different state of uh, like mind uh, even every lockdown happened everything happened and everything this and that but i was in a different kind of emotion after coming from mahashivratri so uh, now uh, then my classes like after covid lockdown happened and uh, my uh, classes then happened online so in that time anna uh, i was my life was all about uh, this uh, uh, music and uh, some videos about sadguru then uh, i remember i had taken the mahashivratri prasadam to one of my friend okay to one of my college friend i had no friend call by the end of fourth, third year i had no friend in colleges college because they uh, thought that i'm very stupid okay and i all i looked stupid to be very honest <laughs> i looked in many ways so uh, i took the prasadam to him and he got very intrigued about what is vipassana this and that and there i made a first time i created one spiritual friend he had not done any practice but there was something in me that that was like just burning okay that was seeking so both of us decided that in april there is a student lockdown a student coupon we will do inner engineering okay oh. <laughs> we did inner engineering and inner engineering to be very honest the seven days of lectures like uh, they were impactful for first one month if you don't do shambhavi they are they are of no meaning they are honestly of no meaning so for one month like both of us did uh, this uh, uh, inner engineering and there was no practice so i continued my uh, uh, music and uh, covid situation was rising in between mm -hmm. okay after this anna what happened was something very personal but still i i am going to share all of this uh, on the podcast okay and 
I hope this podcast never reaches my family. <laughs> so uh, we can edit it off, and if you are not comfortable, like you can tell. No, me. no, I am, I, I am not. I, I am comfortable that uh, more people should know about this, but not my family members. So uh, what happened uh, when COVID was peaking in June in India? So we decided that we will leave Delhi because if I get COVID, I was among the most vulnerable people for COVID. If I co- get COVID, my chances of survival will be just. like no uh, i will not survive because i was already on immunosuppressants so uh, i went uh, my father decided that let's go to my village and we will stay there for two months okay so there i went and uh, something cra- i get i got attracted to one person crazily okay and uh, that was something ana uh, like i just couldn't put off the thoughts from that person okay and uh, i was not understanding what is happening to me and for and that person was actually my appeared to my my cousin so the, uh, she was like someone in my blood relation so whatever logical mindset that a person has okay and uh, all the boundaries that you have that this is not permissible this is permissible everything was beyond that in my experience okay whatever i did whatever methods i tried but getting off like the the attraction that i was having okay that was just beyond my like uh, understanding okay i tried everything every damn thing and i come from a family and now if something like this happens in the family you will just get killed okay you will just get killed there is no explanation from any side okay so uh, uh, things happened and uh, situation like uh, the the uh, even the family members got hint about this this about that and something like very bad happened like it was life threatening for me like somebody <laughs> bought a gun to <laughs> chop me off so this had actually happened and uh, but still another attraction was not ending after that okay that was not ending and uh, 6 to 7 months after even my co- when the communication was over from that person okay i just like i was just losing my mind that how somebody like you i am such a strong person so ba- emotionally balanced person how you can like become so weak for a person with someone you have no future there is no possibility ever okay and then suddenly okay like in my life suddenly dots connect and then suddenly my chemistry teacher who taught me in vidya mandir classes my iit coaching he called me after 5 years he called me after 5 years out of nowhere he he was actually uh, he is a research scientist in bmw like he is a very big man okay. okay so i was just shocked that how high how somebody like randomly why would somebody call you okay why would somebody or even your teacher would call you and he re- to talk to me he said that you look like uh, how are you doing and how is life going this and that and in our second call in our just after this call he said that mujhe lag raha hai tu thoda pareshan hai theek hai to it was like somebody like god has sent somebody because i cannot explain this situation to someone na even in family how will you tell somebody he told me koi cousin wazan ka chakkar pad gaya kya maine kaha how does he know ha directly pehli baat yahi boli ja rahi hai theek hai hey, so is it ha yeah yeah he asked me maine kaha sir how do you know okay to and being a t- i was like कोई टीचर से ऐसी बात कैसे कर सकता है ओके एंड ही ही वाज जस्ट 7 8 इयर्स ओल्डर देन मी एंड वेरी कूल पर्सन दैट टाइम एंड ना ओके दिस वाज द बिगनिंग ऑफ अ न्यू स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी फॉर मी एंड ही एक्सप्लेन मी समथिंग अबाउट ट्विन फ्लेम्स हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट दिस कांसेप्ट ट्विन फ्लेम्स आई हैव हर्ड इट हियर एंड देयर बट आई डोंट नो लाइक व्हाट इट इज और लाइक आई थॉट इट वाज सम गेम पीपल प्लेड और समथिंग आई डोंट नो लाइक नो अह एक्चुअली uh i will explain from my experience not from the internet theories there because there is too much shit on internet about twin flames this and that and i will talk only about my, my experience like what happens in twin flames so he started telling me about twin flames this and that so i was very surprised that how can a random he was a random person for me like if you if asu anna suddenly calls me and to start talking me sorab you know about twin flames this is very strange right so he told me he said sorab i feel that you are a twin flame okay 
मैंने कहा वॉट डज इट वॉट इज इट एंड यू यू जस्ट हेल्प मी गेट ऑफ गेट ओवर दिस गर्ल ओके आई डोंट वॉन्ट एनी थ्योरी और वट इज टू इन्फ्लेम दिस अंदर ही सेट आई विल ही सेट दैट आई विल कनेक्ट यू टू ए यू नो टेरेट कार्ड रीडर्स ओके दे विल कन्फर्म दैट यू आर अ टू इन्फ्लेम दिस और दैट ओके सो ही डेट दैट दैट समबडी फ्रॉम यू एस ए कॉल्ड मी एंड डेट सम प्रैक्टिस ब्लैक मैजिक और वट एवर इट वॉज दिस put the cards up and down and they said you are a twin flame okay so i said what is twin flame please let me know okay and whatever i was reading okay i i just said that i want to get over this person okay the attraction is just increasing day by day okay? right right true and okay that time i understood i understood what is twin flames actually okay i will tell you brief so and actually we are all products of masculine and feminine energy okay you are masculine you are let's say out of 100 you have 50 masculine you have 50 feminine that's that is what shiva is okay shiva right. is a perfectly balanced human being so what in my experience i will tell you from my experiences what my conclusion is after one year of that relationship that twin flames are extremely polar beings okay they exist in one energy uh, like too much like i am too feminine in nature if i am if i tell you like people are generally off and on sometimes masculine sometimes feminine okay but if you take a chart from like in google you can search what are masculine qualities feminine qualities you can search sadguru has also talked about masculine and feminine qualities right what happens with twin flames is that both the person uh like contain the exactly opposite energies like one person will contain extreme masculine energy like extreme masculine energy they do they are very cold in nature okay they are just uh, yeah like just my opposite person am i making sense like i am if i am too feminine in nature that person yes. is too but will be too masculine in nature right yeah so that's why it is too rare in nature because people are not so polar okay people are on and off and the energy content is too much okay like let's say vasu anna has 10 masculine and 8 feminine okay what happens with twin flames is that one person is 70 mas- 70 feminine and masculine is completely absent can you uh, can you imagine and this is my experience okay like the way i perceive i experience life it is very different from all the general society because sadguru also tells that society is 80% masculine in today's day okay mm-hmm. so what happens in uh, you just tend to experience one new dimension in another person that you are lacking have you heard about sadguru's story about brigu brigu please please tell us maybe i might but i don't remember anna so brigu was a devotee of shiva and he was extreme absolutely feminine in nature absolutely feminine in nature so shiva asked uh, so shiva asked him uh, he used to do parikrama of shiva every day okay so uh, parvati got very parvati got very much uh, you can say jealous or something jealous. that why she why she is why brigu is not coming around me he is only worshiping shiva so shiva held parvati's hand and uh, uh, she, she, he took parvati with her okay he said now how i will do the parikrama okay then brigu changed his form to a bird and he did shiva's parikrama okay then he took parvati's in lap okay he he said that now how he will do the parikrama then he again changed the form okay and he became some insect or something and did the parikrama okay so that is uh, shiva just understood was just mesmerized by the devotion of brigu okay and sadguru tells this is absolute feminine nature okay this is absolute feminine nature that absolute devotion and one pointed focus am i making sense so but shiva at the end also said that uh, you are just experiences one dimension of life okay so that's just a gamble for you you are not experiencing life to the fullest so what happens with twin flames anna actually uh, when we meet the other person we just because we feel feel full with that person completely because suddenly you get that uh, the the energy that you were missing from life times Yeah. yeah you were lacking from lifetimes you suddenly see and for that person even if that person do some normal things okay like if i talk about that girl she was very organized in nature very organized okay extremely organized extremely responsible and i am i am highly highly unorganized highly unorganized so whenever i used to see her like it sort of seem like magic to her uh, to me okay that how can somebody be so organized this and that so what happens with twin flames anna that uh, um 
let's say i am a divine feminine okay and uh, i have divine feminine energy along with that i have distorted feminine energy okay both these energies are existing within me similarly the there is distorted masculine there is distorted uh, ma uh, divine ma uh, masculine okay so anna what happens like when the divine masculine encounters the divine masculine when these mm. uh, parts of your energy meet it just becomes magical it just like, divine masculine meets divine feminine Uh, when that parts of your energy are surfacing on your right. and you, so that attraction is just like I cannot explain in words. Okay, that that I understood very lately because who will fall in love with a cousin and now who will knowing coming from a family that uh, even being on a gunshot one time I am telling you, so who will who will like do such a stupid of act? But that that happened. But what happens Anna, in twin flames? Like I'm talking about the bad side now. Okay, one side the attraction is good. When the distorted feminine encounters the distorted masculine, okay, it becomes more than a like volcano eruption. Okay, so it will just it will just like uh, it will just like and like I honestly felt like uh, I'm going to die. There was like there was a normal fight one day. uh and uh, i honestly felt that this is going to be the last day of my life like i if i am very emotional in nature feminine uh, feminine energy is generally very emotional so it kind of so much surfaced on me and uh, i i am telling you one story that i wrote a eight eight page message to that person and in response i get hmm hmm okay mm. so i am just telling you how these energies like feminine is over expressive the person who is very uh, feminine in nature he will tell one line in 100 lines okay and one who is uh, extremely masculine they are so cold that they just express they are inexpressive completely blocked in nature okay so this is like i am telling you some basic science if i get, dive deep into this like honestly this will not make sense to a lot of people because being a twin flame is very rare so talking about this okay but in my personal life like what is the significance of being a twin flame it just signifies that you need a lot of healing to be very honest mm -hmm. like right. you need healing you need this energy once you see once you encounter a divine masculine energy okay you get that divine experience and right. once that once the once that person goes like that girl is not in my life anymore okay we are in right. separation right. Right. so now i have to fill that energy once again right. Right. okay so that is why i i do a lot of sadhana okay that right. person just realizes you the worth of sadhana because without that you cannot live anymore once you get you crave for that divine energy and mm -hmm. same for that for that person also okay right. and my person doesn't matter anymore and her presence my her, our presence doesn't matter anymore in each other's lives because that triggering is done we have triggered each other's that those parts and uh, that part is actually done so we are right now in the healing phase but in short i've told you a new concept today because right, right. Uh, yeah because this is a <laughs> the twin flame is a very spiritual journey and now it's even though it's it may sound that you have super powers okay uh, for me like when it when it is a feminine situation like i work wonderfully okay that things happen so easily for me when like i have to like any situation arises where feminine thing is needed feminine quality is needed okay when love is needed like love is very easy for me like okay sufism is very you know about osho okay yes, of so course, o, yeah. osho osho yeah. talks this very wonderfully that for a feminine mind sufi is very easy mm. and masculine is very and uh, buddha is very tough for a feminine mm. mind and right. that what happened with me in vipassana okay right. if you ask me music there have been days i i have been like 6 hours 7 hours i am lost on my piano okay i have no idea okay and uh, in vipassana i struggled even 20 minutes of meditation okay mm -hmm. and on the contrary side i if i talk about the girl for her love is very difficult okay to love to be selfless it is very difficult but if i ask her to sit like a saint okay i i i actually i only talk taught her all about the basics of meditation she used to sit hours on uh, like on we had to we had conversation on google meet like it was very difficult for me to bring her out of meditation because a masculine energy like for that meditation is a very easy path okay and osho verifies this this is not my theory this is what osho verifies and all so uh, uh i think you had to go around 8:15 no it, it's okay it's okay we can continue no, no worries uh -huh. so tell, I, I tell, me, tell me tell me tell me tell me about the healing part you said when such an experience happens so i think a lot of people who might be listening to this might have gone through something so how Anna, actually if you say that relationship you will say 
whatever your perception of a loving relationship is a romantic mm-hmm. relationship is in twin flames it's exactly opposite okay mm-hmm. so what they do like if i'm extremely emotional i want to express my love that person will just hit the opposite thing they will do the something that you are not expecting okay mm-hmm. if i i'm i'm expecting love they are cold in nature because they are blocked in anahata if i want that they being be honest with yourself okay they uh, like uh, they just don't hide them anything from yourself and that girl hid me everything from i'm um, everything from me she like used to create stories on my own and one day i realized that i am living somebody who has multiple personality disorder to be very honest this is what happened to me one day when she revealed all the secrets and the perception of reality was distorted in her mind always because she used to lie a lot a lot on all levels okay so uh, you're talking about the healing part uh, there was a time na okay when uh, uh, i was initiated in shambhavi in between okay uh, on may 2021 just after this call from my teacher that you are a twin flame he told me dude if you are not doing any spiritual sadhana you will like end up very badly in this relationship because you cannot sustain twin flame relationship because the highs and lows are too much in this high is this and low is just hitting the patal lok okay and this is what my experience was in this relationship so some days i am flying and some days i am in the grave this was like that so uh, i was doing shambhavi uh, from may 2021 i got initiated just to keep maintain this relationship that was my idea that i need balance to sustain this relationship in august 2021 you are talking about the healing partana uh, i received a text from that girl that today i am going to reveal some of the darkest secrets of my life okay so uh, i said okay i couldn't she was just four to three four years younger to me okay what can a 18 19 year old hide from us okay you are, you are smoking drinking or maybe okay uh, you have physical relationships this kind of that but uh, so i said you write she wrote she started writing to me okay she started that uh, this was my puberty time okay and the moment she wrote me this message i said just you keep on writing i am going to do shambhavi and that day i did shambhavi one uh, like one extra time okay why because i knew whatever i am going to uh, read after this is going to be out of my imagination and uh, to accept anything you need a tremendous amount of balance okay and when i came out of sadhana i was just blown away blown away okay and i just to digest all those things was just like i even if i searched internet googled everything i just if i go left if i uh, like become harsh on the girl like it will i uh, i always had in mind that i will be doing wrong to her if i accept that she will be taking me for granted okay so maintaining that situation uh, was very difficult and even i talked to some of my isha yogi friends and uh, that what they, they just said that uh, this is like we have not never heard this kind of situations happening okay he this girl is just not for you and they said but still the you know no the attraction is so tremendous in this relationship that you th- that just this is happening on an energetic level it is not happening on your mental level okay that's why you cannot control that mm. so anna uh, till that this time also i was uh, not able to surrender to this relationship i was always one because feminine energy is has a the distorted feminine energy has a trait of being attached okay being attached this is a very distorted feminine trait uh, so and uh, the distorted masculine is completely opposite they are completely detached they can detach within a second okay like this i have seen personally and uh, so anna after that uh, just after th- this incident i decided that uh, i have to surrender this relationship i need to cut off from this girl okay so i said that one last gift that i am going to give you is your initiation in shambhavi mahamudra on uh, 19 september okay and uh, probably after that maybe some things will improve but it is getting very difficult for me to sustain the relationship and just after that anna i did shunya meditation in 5 on 5 september okay uh, some some background i want to give in august 5 on august 5 i was once again admitted to hospital and this this is a part also like chopped up from sandeep meshwari's video so uh 
I got admitted into hospital and I was having, this is very interesting that I'm going to tell you that uh, I used to have very gastric problems. Okay. Even though after eating, drinking one liters of ash gourd juice daily, I used to drink a lot of ash gourd juice. I used to get acidity issues. I very good diet. I was having Shambhavi twice a day. And I think Surya Kriya. No, no. I was doing Upi Yoga that time. Upi Yoga. So life, every, yet I was getting this. Uh, stomach issues so I got admitted to the hospital and uh, they did some tests and uh, they found nothing okay and uh, they discharged me on 12th or uh, after four or five days I was discharged from the hospital so I was so frustrated in these five four or five days because the acidity thing was just too much for me I texted my friend that uh, aaj agast hai. you just see within one month main isha mein okay I will heal my body in isha Okay, wahan pe achhi diet hogi, everything will be good. And he said, dude, are you crazy? You are just, you have come out of hospital. Okay. And you're going to Isha. So, no, tumhe doctor hi permission nahi denge. And just on 16th of August, the, on, a, on, a, on a volunteers group, there came a message that Shonya is back. After two years of lockdown, Shonya is back. And uh, I registered for Shonya. And I was the first person to get that confirmation. Like 10 a.m. they opened the window. And uh, I just got the confirmation. So Anna, after that, <clears throat> uh, I went for the Shunya program. And in between all this had happened, uh, the message thing I'm telling you. Okay. So I went for Shunya. I did Shunya Shakti Chalan. And Shunya Shakti Chalan was very high, Anna. Okay. For a patient like me, okay. Somebody who has, who has a kidney transplant. And I used yeah. to sleep. Uh, like after Shakti Chalan, I used to sleep only three hours, three hours, three and a half hours. Okay, it was so high. Like only Shakti Chalan, that too, just initiation, not even mandala completion. Okay, so and now after that, I came back and uh, from after coming from uh, in Isha, no stomach problem was there. Okay, everything was good, and uh, I came back and uh, in September, in around September, and okay, my acidity thing again started. Uh, happening so they admitted me and they said let's have a biopsy of your transplanted kidney okay so uh, I had a bi biopsy of my transplanted kidney and the report showed nothing okay they said that the transplanted kidney is fine it it will survive easily 12 to 13 years more okay and after that let we will have another transplant okay I said okay 12 13 years I will around 30 30 to 33 let me uh, there will be many technology by then okay I was not fearful about that so but the acidity thing was not uh, happening uh, like not sorting so and after that uh, from shunya i had met one person you know moni roy it's the actress moni roy yeah yeah actually okay. moni moni roy was, was from our batch only okay oh okay so i think there was somebody assistant of moni roy she taught talked uh, she told me about uh, some uh, ayurvedic healer in bhimtal okay they said you go to Bhimtal and uh, in Bhimtal they do some naturopathy and this and that and uh, after that uh, uh, your stomach problem will be sorted he's a very good human being so I decided when my blood me and my father will go to Bhimtal I reached Bhimtal and I started vomiting there okay so the bad I, I I'm talking to you uh, talking about a very bad phase that just started around 15 October I started uh, having very bad vomiting. Even in such a good weather, I, am, I was taking very good diet in Bhimtal, uh, in between mountains. I was just vomiting. Whatever I, even apple, I used to vomit. Okay. So, Anna, Anna, uh, I, we came back from there. And around 21st October, I, uh, like, mujhe bhook lagne band ho gai us time. I didn't used to feel hungry. And, but I continued my practice. One thing I want, people to learn from me that I have never left my practice even in hospitals even if I am having drips on both of my hands okay and blood pressure machines here I did my sadhana shakti chalan I have made the crow sound in here <laughs> you have done shakti chalan I have done the kaka kriya in hospitals yeah. also like I don't <laughs> give a damn what people think about that so uh, I called Isha and this I said that you stop doing uh, kriya yoga because if your blood work is not fine you should not do kriya yoga uh, uh, that is what uh, Isha Siddha told me. So, Anna, uh, uh, 
my family that time like my condition was getting bad and uh, my family that was that time uh, my father was purchasing some land in varanasi so i that was a very auspicious occasion for us because after so many years something good was happening in our family so i said that i will not tell my family about this and uh, i will uh, like i will go to varanasi with them we will get the land then i will do the blood test here and you just imagine titanic was sinking by that time okay the iceberg iceberg had hit if you are getting my analogy okay so uh, i came back from here there and just after coming on 26th october okay after one week of trip to varanasi like i was vomiting almost 10 to 12 times a day whatever water i was drinking about everything i was puking out okay and something very strange that happened on 26th october that from that girl everything was going fine okay highs and lows were there i suddenly got a message that this is my last message to you and i am not going to message you once again like this is the end of it and no fight no fight like all of a sudden something maybe something happened uh within our family i came to know about nothing no fights nothing this and that and ana being on the feminine side okay i cannot explain that what a heartbreak means to a person who is feminine dominant in energy okay i know if somebody is like more dominant towards the masculine side they know how to detach from situations but what was the weakest point of my life of my personality got triggered during the worst phase of my life here i am facing health issues and here when i need emotional support i got such a message from a person who meant everything to me during that time okay so just giving you an idea what had become to my emotional mindset that time and uh, i got hospital ad- admitted to hospital once again uh, okay and uh, within 10 to 12 days doctors were completely shocked that diseases were coming out of me okay like i went for just a normal stomach problem and i had problem psychologically they started treating me for anxiety depression they started treating my liver everything was just going crazy okay so uh, still i had hopes that my, there will be no problem with i uh, with kidney no matter whatever uh, problems i am facing let my kidneys will be fine for 10 12 years that was my mindset but anna i was treated being with a padma shri and uh, he said that uh, sort of let's have another biopsy of your kidney okay so they that time what everything was happening to my body like every day six to seven needles were they were putting in my body and they were like uh, putting uh, uh, like small small inches cuts were there on my body just to do tests and uh, like every every week it was around 1.5 to 2 lakh rupees bill was there i was being treated in apollo so uh like i was not able to understand like why there was so much suffering i contacted kush anna that time okay kush anna if you know yog with kush he had taught me surya kri actually so uh, he, i said anna i will leave this hospital i will go to isha because i was completely emotionally disbalanced like how can this it, it hit my ego so much that how can this happen to a yogi okay how can this happen and situation was was going more bad day by day and by uh, five uh, by when the biopsy report came a doctor said that this kidney is not going to function for a lot lots of years so they said that uh, five years six years this will work i said okay okay i was still chill and after two to three days they said it will work two years okay and after three days they said it will work one year okay oh. and on 6 16 july they discharged me from hospital that there is no point of staying in hospital let this kidney live on its own okay we cannot do any and during that phase they did gave me every kinds of drugs like they gave me 500 mgs of solimedrol what is solimedrol it is a drug it is a heavy steroid okay uh, 500 mg of steroid even if i give you 20 mg of solimedrol today you will get crazy okay but i lived on 500 mg of solimedrol okay and uh, uh, i get back from hospital 16 december and hoping that one year my kidneys will work fine that night okay uh, my i was breathing very heavily okay and uh, uh, my sister checked my pulse and uh, oxygen it was around 74 75 okay so they took me back to back to the hospital and uh, i was already in the hospital from the last two months discharged just and uh, 
my father took me to the hospital on the night of 16 december 2 am it was and uh, in morning 6 am they again put me back onto dialysis okay uh, my uh, and and what happened was strange to the doctors also like they said that my doctor sandeep guleria has done over 10000 transplants in india uh, and uh, he is the vice president of organ donation president of organ donation of india so you can imagine his experience he said i have never seen such a case in my life okay that some that somebody's kidney is just like uh, it is working like it is working on the peak and just drops just drops not not this not this the curve is not going like this it just drops like this okay so he said uh, that uh, you will need another transplant very soon i was not doing good on dialysis and uh, my hemoglobin was was about 4 and 4.5 that time and i honestly lost the hope to uh, hope to live also that time because mentally physically three months everything was going whatever i did was going against me okay and uh, that time anna uh, i remember on 27 december one sadguru incident i am telling you now uh, that uh, uh i was what uh, my aunt my aunt contacted one of the astrologers in varanasi okay so the astrologer said that this guy is having a problem in his chest so my aunt said that uh, what rubbish this is he is having problem in his kidneys okay chest ki baat kahan se aa gayi theek hai ye aur zyada dara rahe hain and what happened just after one hour after this call i started whatever uh, whenever i was speaking something i was puking blood out of my mouth okay and because water had reached my uh, heart that my lungs that time so i was just uh, very close to like getting a heart heart problem because once water reaches in your heart it will very it is very difficult to make you survive okay so i was uh, admitted in emergency and uh, i uh, i texted my isha friend who had just completed uh, actually he had done urinary engineering with me he had done shunya with me and he had just completed bhav spandana 6 days back so i thought that this is my last let me meet my friend once i texted him okay uh, i said yaar milne aa ja do he was just staying 2 kilometers away from me so he came there and he like started crying that uh, how can something like so much suffering happen just two months after shakti chalan like it was very intense suffering i cannot put that in words okay very concentrated form of suffering so uh, he said ki uh, he was going to vaishno devi that night okay so he said ki let me contact to isha he she said that let me contact to isha and uh, dr guleria that time came he said that it was difficult to make this boy survive now uh, because the situation is falling out of her hands uh, but uh, uh, what my friend did uh, he wrote to sadguru's office there is a email of sadguru office okay that very few people have so he arranged that and he wrote my condition and fortunately we got a reply from isha foundation that sadguru is asking for my photograph and uh, i sent my photograph uh, maybe i will show you also that photograph what was my condition that time okay i was like having all the oxygen pipes within me and caps like i was completely pale and uh, so within uh one hour of sending the photograph i got a message email from sadguru that uh, uh sadguru has sent you his blessings sadguru has received your email he has conveyed you his blessings and he has asked you to chant maha mantra 40 minutes uh and ma madhu chandra will guide you for this okay and that time anna uh being being from kashi my fa- whole family was uh, like into astrologers puja paath this and that okay and in our family whenever every anybody gets uh, physical problem this on that we just really do mahamritunjaya mandra jap in kashi vishwanath temple if you are aware of that uh, like they believe that uh, n- not just believe that this has happened also in my family that uh, 1 lakh or 2 lakh times they, the 11 pandits do the jap and uh, the situation gets better so here sadguru also told me to chant, chant om namah shivaya and the pandits were also saying that इस लड़के पे बहुत भारी ग्रह चल रहे हैं अभी बचना मुश्किल है ओके एवरीबडी वॉज सेंग दैट इतने सारे ग्रह आ कैसे सकते हैं मतलब कि इट वॉज इट लाइक कंसनट्रेटेड सफरिंग इफ आई टेल यू लाइक समथिंग दैट हैपन्स टू पीपल ओवर ईयर्स दैट हैपन टू मी इन मिनट्स इन इन डेज जस्ट डेज एंड देन आई वॉच द सदगुरुज वीडियो जस्ट आफ्टर डेज सदगुरु हैज टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस दैट वेन यू आर ऑन अ स्पिरिचुअल पाथ देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट यू मे गेट 
intense suffering in concentrated form what may happen to you in 20 years will happen to you in maybe months or years and anna that is something i don't i am not saying that i believe that happened it happened honestly because that kind of suffering it was like i have they had put me on the firewood and they are burning me alive okay that kind of thing was happening to me that uh, during that days and another amazing thing i will tell you there was an anna who told me that bring devi to your home and things will improve the day devi was delivered 15th october that was the day i was first day admitted to the hospital first day so here devi was coming and i was just like uh, i was my father was picking me up and taking to my all the plans that i will do stuti every day do her puja was just then i said my mother that don't come to hospital every day just uh, my mother doesn't know what stuti is this and that just put nine diyas in front of her every day okay my mother still believes that it is her presence that i have once again came back to home because after two to three months of staying in hospital just after sadguru's email and his blessings after four days i got discharged on my birthday which was on 1st january and after that anna i i was on dialysis my situation was like it never became life threatening after that okay i became stable my hemoglobin from 4 to today it is around 4 12 13 it is normal i get hemoglobin injections so uh, that was something and from that day now i have never left uh, om namah shiva chanting never i have left that chanting so uh, uh, some more things about my life like uh, my life is right now completely about like uh, we travel to three days to hospital for dialysis and uh, dialysis is a very actually a difficult procedure and uh, it's just you are on survival like you are you cannot you are on very low energy levels when you are on dialysis and that's the one thing anna that that is the most difficult thing for me to be very honest that uh, if sadguru had uh, if like let's say god has taken me something else from me like my piano my job my anything but taking health from me has completely taken like something everything from me like this is what my feelings are about this every day like i don't pray for money like i am uh, by profession i am a data scientist okay i earn a decent amount of money i work for rakuten if you are aware of rakuten you you watch football yeah a little bit not that much okay you if you see the barcelona's jersey uh, okay. rakuten, rakuten is sponsored rakuten is oh, a okay. japanese company it is okay. a big company so uh, every day anna like my prayers are only about like uh, because on dialysis like if i tell you about the precautions that i'm having okay i cannot i, I can only eat apple uh, papaya and uh, pineapple these three fruits okay these three fruits i'm allowed water water i am allowed only 700 ml daily in this scorching heat okay, okay. so i just lick water i don't like i cannot get 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 pee like i cannot drink water okay so i i have to just sip water because water builds up in my body no if it uh, i don't like uh, pass urine so uh, water builds up if you it should not exceed 2 liters within 2 days okay so if it exceeds that it may reach your heart and it has happened like some day i drink a lot of water and uh, i start puking blood off my because it have it reaches your lungs okay and third thing being the difficulty as a dialysis patient is that uh, uh, you whatever you eat because the amount of toxins in your body is so high because kidney is not working like if you have 20 urea right now which is in normal standard my body will have 160 okay almost eight times so uh, if you have high urea you just don't get taste in anything you give me a pizza you give me a khichdi you give me dal chawal you give me the most tastiest food i like everything tastes like thermocol or something like that to me so i just have to eat that just to for my survival uh, otherwise there is no taste in food water restrictions and low energy this is i'm not complaining just telling you the existing situations of a dialysis patient uh, and three times you cannot travel okay you cannot travel for long and you have to go for dialysis okay and uh, but still after all of this and now i still have a very strong calling from my heart that uh, things have not ended for me because in my life uh, things have always i hit the bottom and after that i bounce back suddenly
like they just connect things just happen and after getting blessed by sadguru i believe that something big is meant to happen thank you uh, thank you anna <laughs> yeah this is that so uh, anna just give me one second i will uh, connect my charger now uh, just 10 minutes yes. i will tell you one mo- i will tell you about yes, my yes. isha i came please, from isha please. actually yeah uh, yeah, yeah just coming i guess that's a powerful message i don't know what to say as you can see this sadguru's picture is there a devi over there i can't there's a dhyanalinga picture and i think there must be a devi gudi i'm not able to see it yeah na uh, yes. so ana actually i uh, right now uh, my father is donating me the kidney now and uh, what my it's i am putting it in just two three words but it is a big process actually two lives are involved in a major surgery right and uh, uh, sadguru is also aware of this situation okay so uh, and uh, i have always kept my sad- like the 40 minutes om namah shivaya chanting and all the things have happened very smoothly the testing process of me and my father the match match had been very good with my father also because in a country like india uh, people generally don't get even one transplant and i am getting the chance to get a second transplant and i am very assured that the suffering period is over now for me the concentrated one because that time was actually very difficult to logically digest me in any form okay and uh, what astrologers also told us like uh, they also said that this boy is not going to survive not just one astrologer some of the best pundits of kashi i am telling about that so but i survived and uh, uh, what i believe uh, if you have seen uh, if you have read death book by sadguru uh, sadguru has mentioned this that people who generally uh, kind of bounce back to these kind of situations like life threatening like they dissolve this is kind of karma dissolving like some some karma that doesn't come out in it comes out in the form of disease or some uh, hazardous situation so if they are able to tackle that they are generally very strong souls and this sadguru tells and uh, they have a very big purpose in life generally so uh, ana uh, just before surgery i decided i also watched sadguru's another video that uh, if some nothing is working out for you just come to ashram for one week or two week okay do your sadhana in a concentrated space and just work out that bad phase uh, here because if you do intense sadhana in ashram for one week or 10 days it will it can cross 20 years or 30 years of life that's what even more the amount doesn't matter so uh this is a recent in- incident just on 22 when sadguru was back from safe soil okay sadguru came to safe soil in delhi and even though all the problems i went i even though all the compulsions that my body is having right now all the problems that i am have i am very low in energy i was just on in the all the events i remember when sadguru was passing from noida to lucknow uh through highway so mm. there was an urgent meeting between sadguru to uh, sadguru and narendra modi sadguru is generally never late on schedule but that day uh, his passing from 230 became uh, 430 like he was about to come to 230 and it was scorching heat and volunteers were standing just to say bye to sadguru for one second he just goes off na and i remember it was 48 to 49 degrees celsius of heat that day and uh, there was no water on that like it was a highway where, where will one get water so but still people were just dancing la la le 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 and uh, they waited for sadguru for two hours and uh, we somehow got the water like there was some fountain behind and we got uh, ground ground water cold ground water but i was yet not allowed to drink a lot of water right so but still i was like his grace is like that i was still on in the complete like nobody can tell that a kidney patient is standing here okay and uh, after that i decided that sadguru is uh, like my surgery will happen in a month or so so i decided that i will seek his blessings sadguru's blessings then i will move forward for this surgery so uh, prachi akka actually told me that uh, sadguru is living to usa uh, 
uh, only after four four days of coming to ashram. The day I heard this, I just had a fight in my family that I'm going to Isha. Okay, I had no plans. How will I do the dialysis? Because ashram is forty kilometers away from, uh, who, uh, from the hospitals. So uh, on twenty second, uh, Prachi Akka called me that Sadhguru is leaving. On twenty second, I, uh, you want to ask something? No, 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 no. Please carry on. Uh, on twenty second, I just booked the flight ticket, and that on twenty three, I will reach uh, Coimbatore, and twenty uh, four, I will. 24 Sadhguru will leave. I will meet Sadhguru that day. Okay, so that was actually the Dhan Lingam consecration day. Okay, and uh, I feel very lucky that uh, I was uh, able to chant Om Namah Shivaya in Dhan Lingam. Like from that situation that I mentioned you in December to chanting Om Namah Shivaya in Dhan Lingam is a big thing. That too in the presence of Sadhguru because Sadhguru was there in the dome when I was there uh, on consecration day. So Anna, the moment I saw him, uh, it just felt within me that uh, talking to him, like uh, it will be meaningless. Like though so many people are here, and I come, that Sadhguru, I need your blessings. It will distort the uh, place completely. And in ashram, once you go there, like you just feel that his presence is everywhere. Like you don't need his blessing separately. This and that. So Anna, in Coimbatore, uh, I did. Uh, Up and down from ashram, like every second day, I used to go to dialysis and then come back to my cottage. Uh, but what amazing thing happened was that I was completely on during these uh, two weeks. Uh, during this ten days, ten days I stayed in ashram. Okay, and uh, I used to take the bus from Isha Center and uh, go to. And even at Isha, there was a problem. I will tell you that at Isha they don't allow you to go outside ashram. Okay, huh. once you. Yeah. I know. So I went there, and I had never read, and I didn't read uh, read this guideline. Okay. <clears throat> so when I went for the cottage, uh, I just told them. They said, "No, no, we won't allow you." So I had to contact so many internally, Ma and uh, Swami's. Then they gave me the permission to get this dialysis uh, because they also understood that my purpose is not just to have fun here. Okay, yeah. I. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to follow the video that Sadhguru told that you can burn your karma here and uh, just make your process, make yourself available to grace very easily. Okay, and this is what I need the most today. Uh, if I tell you, so I, uh, I was Anna. My schedule was like completely on during this uh, Isha stay. Like uh, I used to wake up around seven a.m. And uh, go to Devi Temple. That Abhishekam that happens uh, happens at seven forty five a.m. And uh, then till eleven twelve uh, p.m. Eleven uh, a.m. I used to be around uh, this temple only. And uh, then I used to do my office work three to four hours. And uh, after that, I used to be on till night uh, in Isha. The uh, you are a maximum allowed seven days only uh, at uh, at the ashram. And one thing I I saw in my mobile that. I was walking around fourteen, fifteen kilometers daily. Mm -hmm. So this is a magical thing, Anna, because uh, a dialysis patient. What happens sometimes? I ha I also have to take a wheelchair when I come out of hospital. Okay, the energy just goes down after four hours of dialysis. It's such a difficult process, but I don't know what happened in the ashram. Like everything was full on completely. It was, and I honestly hope like things will. Like continue to flow gracefully, just the way they have happened in the past, like this. Beautiful. So, Anna. <laughs> uh, anything? Any questions you want to ask, Anna? Because no, I have Anna. to continue. No, no questions. It's. I just want to say thank you for you know. I'm glad that Prajyaka message Pavitra and this happened. It's a. Uh, it's a, uh, because you know as even I've been doing sadhana and all you know. Still, small, small things happen. I'm like, why is this happening? Why is it not? Why am I not happy? Why is it not? And and just listening to what you're going through and how gracefully you're taking it and uh, things that are happening. I think uh, I don't have anything to say. So I think this podcast itself means a lot to me. I don't know how many people will hear it. Maybe it's just one. Maybe I am only able to hear it even after I post it. But it's still, it's. Uh, I think it's. I'm super glad that I did it and. Uh, Thank you for being and sharing this. Now, now I can tell. Don't listen to the ten minutes on the Maheshwari. Please listen to this one hour forty three minute podcast. <laughs> yeah, Anna. Actually, one thing I will tell you that uh, Devi is something like if you sit in her presence, like uh, 
I'm not saying that I can feel her every day. Okay, but the day when she hits, actually, it becomes very difficult to even think anything because her presence is so dominating. Sadhguru's presence. I this time also in Dhyan Lingam, it happened to me. Like I closed my eyes and uh, like it. It was difficult to create a thought also in my mind. Once you enter that zone, like. that it's just like you ha- you have to flow with that you d- don't have a choice in that that's uh, that's what i mean to say and one of my aspirations is anna that i become a good piano player and uh, join sounds of isha very soon <laughs> because uh, because there is no piano player in sounds of isha i have seen right. that so asama saravana so namaskar okay. anna so, anything that you would like to leave the audience final words and are like for the podcast like some few what would you like to tell them maybe they're struggling yeah. with their practices that's the one thing that often happens to most meditators but they don't put it out so what would you like to tell them or maybe it's just generally something that they're going through maybe it's even a breakup or whatever like what would you tell them regarding just your two cents final two cents yeah uh, so in terms of uh, and honestly uh, one thing uh, i want to tell you that uh, as i told you i am very feminine dominant uh, dominant in energy and to meet like a a person like me is actually rare actually rare this is because the way things happen to me the way things happen align with other people it it is very difficult to tell mm-hmm. in words but what i want to tell her is that uh, tell everybody is that uh, like when you soak in grace like you are actually left with no choice you are actually left me uh, the kind of person that i am today is uh, i will say that all this disease disease and all of these things were a blessing to me and that girl was in all the ways were a blessing was a blessing to me okay it was the best that this she didn't meet my expectations because i could that that is the reason why i was able to find the loopholes within my personality so when people are actually not uh, meeting your expectations i think it is the best time to look within yourselves that because th- those people are actually blessing to you you are always in a win win case that's what i believe because they tri- trigger the best parts of your unhealed version and that's um, like being a twin flame people say that uh, it's a journey from the distorted energy to the divine energy and that is applicable to everyone you don't need to be a twin flame for that okay and uh, probably uh, another thing is that uh, meditate like if you are your audience is connected to sadguru anna like who who will like what can i say like my words are just very small in front of this and another thing is like uh, please watch those documentaries code and i think that will give you a very deep perception about music this and that it may inspire you maybe you are a mathematician and you know albert einstein was very fond of uh, music he said that uh, if i'm not a uh, if i'm not a musician if not a mathematician i would have been a musician so because he could see the divine connection between both of these things happening so so this is not and, and uh, another thing i just need uh, blessings from everyone because uh, uh, to be very honest uh, i have i don't have any expectations that uh, this should happen to that uh, that i have don't have very deep desires within me that uh, i have a very big house very big car this i have a i get married to somebody like this beautiful partner this and that like i have very basic prayers to devi also every day that i get my health back soon and and uh, i am able to do the uh, i am able to drink water whenever i want okay because to you it you you may not be able to connect to that but it's actually a very difficult process it itself in a sad is a sadhana in itself you know when i i used to sit in the bhiksha hall okay in bhiksha hall everything is very tasty you know but out of everything i i was able to eat only two or three things okay uh, the because uh, in sambar there is too much potassium i cannot eat that i cannot eat peanuts isha serves a lot of peanuts okay uh, isha serves a lot of sweet dishes that has jaggery in it okay and jaggery is also not allowed to me so just imagine the days that i have lived in isha in the 7 8 days there also like things were not easy 
okay some days like uh, three days back uh, the food that they gave was uh, even the rice was having coconut and i'm not allowed to eat coconut so i had to eat and go bread take bread in the isha canteen so that was uh, these are the anna uh, like basic struggles and i just my prayers are that i want to overcome this only and i live like a normal person and other things are just happening to me i don't need uh, i'm not like desiring for anything very big so so yeah. there is a i will reach out to you like is there a mail id or social handle where if they want to or so just a youtube comment is yeah. fine yeah if if and i have uh, uh being a like uh, you can say a piano player not a professional one i want to be a professional one so my aim i told this to sandeep sir also but i think he chopped this off uh, from his video for myself i earn a lot anna okay i even i struggled that where should i i spend this money this is my situation okay like i went to isha store and what 10 to 15 pendants for my friends and adiyogi rudraksh that i will gift my friends plus lots of prasadam and my sister was fighting that why are you uh, like why do you always you never spend on yourself and just this and that so, but uh, uh, anna there are uh, some research is going on in usa about artificial kidney and mm-hmm. they are not being funded by because this dialysis industry will shut down dialysis is a very costly like my every dialysis session is around 4500 okay right. weekly 4500 uh, into 3 you can imagine close to 13500 and uh, for a month uh, it becomes 50000 rupees 50 55000 rupees so if you are making from one patient 55000 they are not going to shut this industry uh, very easily right allow so uh, my aim to sandeep sir was i talked to him that you have a very large audience and uh, what if i uh, play some music and then ask for some donations and i will donate the complete money to i think some 14 million dollars are required for that okay. research to proceed okay right. so uh, i think if he would have put this part in the video it would have meant a lot okay but uh, still everything is fine i know so i will find some other way so i need people that they join my instagram and uh, uh, everything is possible even if i donate enough some money to that research and so many lives can change because i i have seen the bottom part bottom rock of this disease kidney disease okay even out of all the kidney patients now i come to a class of like my reports are actually very bad compared to the class of end stage renal disease also okay so i have seen the worst of that i will never wish on that anybody else goes through this situation and i uh, want to make every best possible effort to improve the situation in any case so that's why if people can follow me on instagram and in future if i do some uh like fundraising and anything can you tell me your handle so that i can just s a u r a b h b h 952 952 which one is it anna like the top one top, top one. yeah top one okay yeah this is the one follow sarvana data yeah. scientist piano player this one right right yeah, yeah definitely definitely anna thank you anna thank you so much thank, thank you, you for... so much anna okay uh, it would be very great some day i will connect to you as a okay, as a yoga practice proper yoga, yoga practitioner all the practices that i did you are anna like what more <laughs> hey guys hope you enjoyed the podcast uh, if you have listened to the end you know how much uh, mm, i'm sure this podcast was very inspiring touching or just no thing as a guru says uh which is the most important thing so yeah so please connect with saurabh banna he's also there on my discord so please do why i'm making this video is please do join my discord this is very important because i'm trying to build a community so that you can connect with such awesome people uh, you know talk to them when you are struggling especially if you're going through some mental health issues or something you know or physical ailments or whatever you know Uh, out there it's all about happiness jo you do the practices but you know in our experience when you are getting more intense into the practices things just start popping up right so at this time it's very important that you have a community with whom you can just share things and you know talk to them 
and see what it is that you can do so hopefully please please do join my discord it's there in the description or in the link in my instagram so please join take care guys namaskaram bye